All right, welcome to the fifth video in our video series on making Node.js apps from beginning to end. In this video, we are going to be continuing on from the last video in which we set up and ran our server, but in the last video when we ran our server and we sent our first request to the server to load the page, we got stuck loading. So to understand why this happened, and we're going to go ahead and replicate that in just a second, we need to understand the request response cycle that occurs when the user interacts with the server. So here I've got the uh, same server that we set up last time. This is all the code. This is the file, the same one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up in my text editor. And here's that code in which we imported the HTTP module. We created a server on the HTTP module, and then we passed in a request listener and in that request listener which we defined right here every time we get a request we just console log we got a request and then we set that entire server to listen right here on this host and on this port so this is our local host and port 3000 so let's replicate the issue we got last time where it got stuck loading so to do that first we need to uh, get our server running so we're going to go CD it's on my desktop and I called it node server so I'm going to go into that so now that I'm here in the working directory I'm going to go ahead and run that script we created last time called start so npm start there we go it starts up our server now let's check it out in the browser localhost 3000 and you'll see here it gets stuck again so why does it get stuck well let's talk about the request handler and the request and response objects that get passed into it. What are these? Well, request is what we are getting from the browser. It's the user's request from the browser to the server and it's the request to get or send something from the server. It's going to have uh, information like the URL and the method along with much much more but the URL and the method is really what we're concerned with right here. So let's go ahead and console log those out. Request.url, that's going to be the URL the user is on when they send the request. And then the request.method. And this is the request method such as get or post. All right, so let's save that. And now we're going to go here. So we should expect to see this again request we got a request and then we should expect to see a URL and a method so let's go to Safari let's end that and let's go to localhost again and when we run it it's still getting stuck we got another we got a request but you'll notice we don't get anything else so it seems like nothing's changed so what's happened here this is a common uh, mistake you'll get when you first start doing node.js servers um, what you have to do is you have to actually quit the server with control C and then run it again. Now once it's running again, now we can reload and now we get, we got a request, we get the URL and we get the type of request. So we see here that the URL is just a blank URL with just a backslash and if you look at the URL in the browser you won't see that but implicitly that backslash is there it's the same page but you'll see the browser takes that away uh, just to make it look better I guess for the user but it sends along that URL backslash to the server now the get method this is just the default method that is always going to be sent unless a post method or something else is specified but the get is going to be the default so now that we know all that how do we use the response to actually get this page to load well the response is what we on the server side will send back to the user in the browser this could be text JSON data HTML or some other file or even an error well how do we do this well we do this with many different things but one way to do it is we can finalize and send off the response with something called response dot end and that just finalizes and sends off the response to the server so we're gonna save that now remember we need to restart our server and now that we when we go here and we load this it'll load so we got we got a request 
Oh, so, okay. So we got we got a request, we got the URL, and we got a get method. Okay. Now this right here, this right here, there's another request here. Where did this come from? Well, in some browsers, you'll see this where the browser is looking for something called a favicon dot ico right there, which is a special icon, which is what you'll see right here. This is just a default icon. We didn't set that up. That's just default since we don't have one. If you go to something like getbootstrap.com, you'll see they have a custom favicon right there. Now the browser, even though the user just did a request on this URL here, the browser automatically sends a URL request on that URL right there. Now that it's cached that, we shouldn't see that anymore, but it, initially it has to do that first one to try to get that favicon to load right there. So that's what that is, if you see that. Now, this blank white page right here is not very exciting, uh, so let's talk about how we can do a little bit more. However, before we start doing anything more, let's talk about an easier way to get this server to restart. If you go to package.json, you'll see our start scripts right here. So let's add another one right after here, put a comma, and then we're going to create another start script called dev start. This is the start script we are going to run during development. So it's going to look almost like the other one, just slightly different, and we're going to use something called nodemon to start our file running. Now what Nodemon is, is it is actually a package from NPM that not only starts and runs this file like Node does, but it'll also watch that file and everything related to it. And whenever we make a change and save it, Nodemon will automatically restart our server for us. So how do we get this amazing little package here? Well, this is going to be the first time that we're going to be downloading a package from NPM. So to do that, let's quit out of our server and now make sure we're in that working directory which we should be and then we just do npm install nodemon so that's the name of the package and then dash dash save and that save flag will save it to our dependencies in this package.json which you'll see created here in just a second so I'm gonna go ahead and run that and it, while that's installing it's going to add nodemon to the dependencies in our file for us and it's going to create node modules which you saw just pop up right there. And next it's going to create package lock and add nodemon to our dependencies. Now what node modules is, this is a bunch of modules that node and nodemon need and all sorts of stuff uh, that just it relies on. So it needs these in order to run. And package lock.json is just a file that lists out all the descriptions and rules and stuff for each dependency. And so for the most part, we're just going to ignore both of these. Just know that whenever you install packages from NPM, it's going to add it to your node modules, and then it's going to add the information about that package to packagelock.json. So we're going to ignore those. Lastly, we'll notice that it, it added to our package.json this dependencies part. And so what this dependencies part of our file is, is it says our app depends on nodemon having a version of at least 1.17.3 or higher. So we know that since we just downloaded it, we at least have that version. So let's go ahead and use it using this new dev start script we created. So we're going to do that with npm run dev start. Now this is slightly different than npm start. When we do npm start, node automatically knows where to look for a start script. However, for something that we just named called dev start, it doesn't really know where to look. But if we say npm run, it automatically knows to look in the scripts for a script called dev start, because that's what we specified. So then it's going to look, it'll find that in scripts, and then it'll run the command right there for us. So we're going to go ahead and run that. And you'll see right here, it ran our server. It gives a little command here letting us know we can always use rs to restart our server. It told us it's watching dot, which means anything associated with this project and then it ran node index.js so now when we make changes it'll automatically restart our server and run for us so now that we've got that going let's go ahead and make some changes to our server alright so let's talk about the request now that we know that the request gives us the URL and the method let's go ahead and use that to our advantage to determine what page the user is requesting 
So we're going to say if request.method equals get, if it's a get request, and if the request.url equals that blank slash at first, then we know that they're trying to index this URL, they're trying to access this URL on the get method request. So we're going to serve them our home page with a function that we're going to define in just a second. But we're going to say serve home page, and to this function, we're going to pass the response object so that the, this method can do things like response.end and writing to the response and things like we'll see in just a second. So let's define this. I'm going to say let serve home page equals, and we know we're getting that response, and then we're going to say, so when, th when this method gets called, what do we want to do? Well, let's serve something back other than just some text. Let's go ahead and maybe serve back some HTML. Well, how do we do that? Well, we have to write to the head of the response. The head of the response is just information about the response, while the body of the response is the actual contents of the response. So we're going to say response, nope, response write head. Okay, and we're going to say 200, and we're going to say content type is going to be text or HTML. Okay, so what this does is it is telling the browser in the head of the response, it's saying, okay, 200, status code 200 means everything went okay. If you didn't know that, that's what the status code 200 means. We'll see some other status codes later on. So the browser says, okay, everything went good on the server side, and I should be expecting a content type of text or HTML. All right, so once the browser sees that, it'll be ready. So now we can do response.write, which just implicitly writes to the body of the response, and so we're going to add some HTML here. We're just going to add an h1 tag saying, welcome to my home page, all right? And then we will also add a link to another page on our site or on our server. And we're going to put the, set the href of that equal to slash next page. And we're just going to say, check out the next page. All right. And then, remember, we have to end this cycle. And once that happens, it'll send, it'll finalize everything we've done and send it off to the browser. So let's go ahead and check out this route now. So here we go. We get this h1 tag, so we know it's actually rendering HTML, and we get this link right here, check out the next page. We click that, and we get stuck loading. Well, why is this? Well, it's because we haven't handled this yet. We haven't done anything to handle this. All we have is, well, if the user sends a get request on this URL, we know how to handle that. But what if the user clicks this, and now they're sending a get request on this URL, next page? What do we do? Well, we haven't handled that, so let's go ahead and handle it. So we'll say else if the request.method still equals get, and the request.url, now if this equals next page, now what we want to do is we want to say serve next page. And we will also want to pass in that response. Okay, so let's define this. Let serve next page equals, and we'll pass in that response. And then for this, we're just going to say um, it's also oh, it's going to be very similar. So let's just go ahead and uh, copy paste this. Go ahead and copy paste that. So there, everything went good, and they're still expecting HTML. The browser is still expecting HTML. It's going to be slightly less important. So let's make this maybe an H3 tag, and then um, we're just going to say here in the href of this dot slash, which means the root directory, slash, which is just going to be the blank URL once again. 
So we're going to change this text here to go back to the home page. And then we're going to end that cycle again. So now there we go. Let's go ahead and check that out now. And you'll notice every time that we save this, NodeMon is restarting for us. So let's now we can go ahead and go to our home page again. So our home page, check out the next page, and look at that. This is oh, it still says home page. So let's go ahead and change that real fast. Real fast to my next page. Save that, restarts for us. We reload. It says welcome to my next page. We can go back to the home page back and forth marvelous that is awesome I know super cool website super cool website you guys have built here let's make something maybe a little more interesting though in the next lesson how about that finally what if we did something like this random page right there well it gets stuck again well why does it get stuck well we don't have anything to handle random page so obviously we can't handle every single set of words that the user could put in. So what do we do? Well, we add a final else statement that says if nothing else has been caught, if, they, if we haven't caught this so far, we want to do response response.end and then we're going to send a message and we're going to say error, everyone's favorite message, error 404 this page does not exist. So there we go. Now if nothing's caught here and it gets to this point, this means the user has tried to access a page we don't have. So we're just going to serve them this error. So let's go ahead and check out that random page one now. And it says this page does not exist. So we could do anything here. We could do not a, not a page. This page does not exist. So no matter what we do now, we're going to get some sort of response. It's not going to get stuck loading anymore. So that is exactly what we wanted. Now we could go ahead and if we wanted we could define some sort of um, we could just say send 404 error and send in that response. It keeps doing that. Four is of autocorrect. That's what you get. And then we're just going to say, I'm going to copy this again because I'm a cheater except this time it's just going to be text it's just going to be plain text and so we're going to say um, we're not even going to worry about any sort of header let's just uh, have this as a p tag is that an h1? why is that an h1? stupid alright and we're going to say uh, um, did we save that? yeah right here copy that put that in there and then right here we're going to say send 404 error and pass it that response. There we go. Now everything should be working. So there you go. There is your first web page. Still getting errors there. You'll see who we're getting. Oh, that's because I said it was just going to be text. So there we go. Now it won't have those little tags and look silly. Okay, so there we go. Now if we go to our home page, there we go. We can go back and forth between our pages. Now obviously you can make this site as large as you want, just testing for all these different request methods and URLs, but that's going to get not so fun in a very short time. So in the next lesson, we're going to be looking at a better way to do this. We're going to use a package called Express from NPM, and it's going to make our... Uh, web apps much more powerful and it'll also make our lives easier creating them and we'll just be able to do a whole lot more a whole lot quicker so I'm excited to show you guys that and I'll see you there next lesson